All right, it looks like we are officially live here. So thanks everybody for joining us for today's session. Before we dive in and get started, I just wanna do a quick tech check. Can you let me know if you can hear us and if you can see us? <laughs> Where's my comments? There we go. Guys, you're leaving me hanging there. Come on. <laughs> all right. I can see the comments coming in now. Looks like we are all set and ready to go here, which is amazing. Um, it's been a pretty crazy week, you guys. It is, I think, what? This is, is this session five, six, five. This is session five. We've got two more sessions for the remainder of the week. We're going to get through this one. I hope you guys have been getting lots of great insights that you can take away for your own business. Um, today, what we're going to be talking about is how you can use services like Side Door to really dramatically increase the profit that you're making from your e-design business. Not only that, we're also just going to touch on how you can actually streamline the overall process for both you and your client by being able to have one, one seamless checkout process so your client isn't having to jump around to a dozen different locations to start shopping product. So we'll dive into all the great benefits here, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take a moment to introduce this lovely person right next to me. So for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Chad Smith is the director of sales at Side Door. He's a seasoned entrepreneur with a proven track record of growing, selling, and, or sorry, of starting, growing, and selling businesses in the home furnishings industry. And he's really passionate about helping small independent businesses compete with the big guys. So I'm excited to have Chad in here. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. It's really great to have you. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Excited to talk. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. So I guess before we kind of jump into some of the more like specific questions about exactly what it is that Side Door offers, it'd be great just to kind of start with an overview of why you guys built Side Door and what kind of problems interiors lenders are dealing with that you guys are trying to solve. Sure. Well, there's quite a few. Um, <laughs> There's no shortage of problems in the design industry. And the one that we've kind of honed in on for a lot of reasons is the simple fact that most designers don't make enough money for the value that they're providing. And that's a pretty broad statement, but design and the design business is very, it's a very hard way to make a living. It's nuanced, it's complicated. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a, not really a code of the right or wrong way to do things. There's a lot of entrepreneurism and hustle that's required. So even when you do all that, though, there's also a limited number of hours in the day. And if you're charging for your time, et cetera, you're capped. We firmly believe that you have to be able to make money on the products. And there's no better like curator than an interior designer, someone who understands the form and function of the world's products and can put them together. But unless you're able to make money on that, you're not going to be able to really maximize your, your business for very long. You're just going to be trading dollars back and forth, sending your client and your knowledge elsewhere for someone else to make money on the products. So, um, a couple of entrepreneurs from the industry got together. We've been tackling this problem independently for a bunch of ways. Uh, we decided uh, through our um, previous experiences, like this is something that we can really help with and bringing tech to a very untechnical process. But in a nutshell, giving designers digital selling tools for products, a way for designers to curate and to share their knowledge. Um, designers are like tastemakers, frankly. And what we saw is that everything and everyone was moving online. And a lot of the barriers for these getting these products were coming down. So our whole thesis, Sheila, is that as everything and everyone goes online, someone still has to curate, advise, share, and, and weed through all the mess online and help 
clients figure out how to like get the feeling and the and style that they want. We thought if we could give them the selling tools that other industries have, that other influencers have, then we could unlock a lot of revenue for the designers. The one who's kind of the creator, they can be more of a project or product creator and manager instead of a administrator because we've automated and built a team for a lot of the unfun, unsexy, boring basics part of running a design business. Got it. One of the things that I actually really like about what Side Door does is, and particularly for e-designers, this is because this is the audience that we're talking to today. So I just kind of want to bring it up. But typically as an e-designer, it, you might just be getting paid for your design services and then you're losing out on all of those markups or commissions that you could be earning off of the actual products that your clients are purchasing. You, went, you might also just be using standard affiliate links. You maybe you're a part of the like to know or you've joined the CJ affiliate network and you're earning maybe two to five percent commissions on the sale of products that your clients are buying. So it's still really small amounts that you're getting when in actuality, you're still spending all of that time doing all that sourcing work, picking all these fantastic products to make your clients really happy, but you're kind of losing out on those great commissions that you would otherwise be getting if this was a full service gig and you're using your trade accounts and you're marking up product. And this is one way that I think Sidor can really open up new options for designers, allow them to still continue on with that simple business model. If they do wanna do focus on virtual and they still wanna let the client shop to look, but now you've got an option where you can get significantly more and up to 30% commissions on those products and not lose out on all that extra revenue. Well, exactly. And what we kind of took dead aim at were these affiliate programs, which frankly pay chunk change and they pay it in 90 days and they make you jump through a bunch of hoops. And really another way to look at it is you've done the work and then you just sent someone to basically a competitor, a big e-commerce site that frankly doesn't need your help making money. Um, This is just a nice little bonus for them. And your client now knows that source if they didn't already and won't be coming back to you for the next, the next thing. They'll just go straight to the source. It's a, not in every case, but like the more friction between your client, who's the homeowner with his wallet out, his or her wallet out and the person who can ship it, the more people in the middle there are just going to be slowing things down frankly. And you're the one in that relationship with that client. You're the one who's proposed it to send that person somewhere else, leaving your world, leaving your website, leaving your mood board, et cetera. You're leaving a lot of profit for someone else to make. And we, we just see that as a huge problem because already in 2023, 30% of home furnishings are being purchased online in the industry. That's, most likely not going to go down. And no, no, we're going more, out. <laughs> more transparent and digital and clear that the person, like the person who's in the relationship, can be the easier that person can make it for someone to buy. The more seamless everything is going to be, and that's like just the nature of today's customer. If it's hard, they're bouncing. They're going somewhere else. They've already got no attention. And if you're making them jump through a bunch of hoops or or go off to 19 different websites to buy something, it's a lot of work. And there's a great chance that they're going to fall off or out of your world when you send them elsewhere. And there's no need to. Um, We've got, you know, 300 plus thousand SKUs on our site of high end, harder to get trade brands and really what it boils down to is you can make three to 8% elsewhere, or you can make on average 25 to 30% and keep that person in your world and not have to do a purchase order, not have to handle all the back end. Um, So the the financial case is a no brainer. The, the training part of like learning that new behavior is, is the challenge. Nice. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, so you mentioned you've got all of these these trade brands that are part of the side door ecosystem, thousands, hundreds of thousands of products to choose from. So one of the things that might be crossing our audience's mind is like, 
normally I would have to deal with setting up individual trade accounts, meeting minimums. What what's the what's the barrier for getting involved with side door? There's just one that we need your resale certificate on file. Um, we need a some way to verify that you are in the trade. And when you have that across all the brands, you can order with no minimum and without having your own account. So you also a key point is you can shop for yourself or you can just pull products for mood boards, et cetera, share them once, share them on your website, share them anywhere publicly. And when anyone buys from one of your public collections, you're going to make the full designer commission. So it's, if you've been in the industry for a while, you, this will be pretty basic, but assume there's three levels. There's the retail, which is also generally the IMAP price, the internet minimum advertised price. That's what a brand is selling their stuff for. Uh, the floor price on Paragold or House or one of the Kathy Kua or one of these e-com sites. Then there's a designer net price, which is if you went to the brand directly, set up your own account, paid a minimum in some cases, that's the price you will receive. And then there's a stocking dealer price, which another way to say it is wholesale. We're placed, we're aggregating all these orders. We're placing the orders at wholesale. So we make the spread between the wholesale price and the designer net price. That's our margin. And with that, we deal with all the fulfillment, credit card fees, taxes, blah, 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 handle everything after the sale. Um, you're still making the full spread between the designer net price and the brand's IMAP price. Our deal with the brand, Sheila, is you can only share their products online on a mood board anywhere at their IMAP price. They're right. super sensitive about it. And that's one of just the stipulations that, that we have to follow. And that's pretty much the stipulations that pretty much everybody has to follow, not specifically side door. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's uh, okay. So that kind of breaks everything down. Um, when it comes to the actual product collections, is it mainly like high end products or is a designer going to be able to find items for any client budget and work on any project? Yep. There, it runs the gamut. We've also, been continuously adding to our filters so you can search from high to low pricing, et cetera. You can search by category. In general, it's most of the brands you'd see at High Point Market, for instance. We're trying to have as wide a selection as possible just because no two design jobs are the same. Usually designers are working across a spectrum of price points. So we're adding in a lot of smaller price points, lower end items, and a bunch of high end items, which surprisingly sell almost as well as the middle of the road things. Um, so there's Thanks. there's quite a bit of choice. We're trying to add as many different options as possible. We're also adding a textile fabric wallpaper um, oh, cool. category, which will allow you to buy from some of the top fabric brands one yard at a time, get swatches, et cetera. That's the next big frontier for us. Just out of curiosity, if a designer wanted to get a sample for those wallpapers, those fabrics, anything like that, are they doing that through you guys or is it something that goes straight through to the actual vendor? They're doing it through us right now. Um, okay, the, cool. the, some vendors will support it, some won't. Um, but if they do offer sample uh, swatches, et cetera, you can just chat in message us our customer support team will take care of that for you what's the usual turnaround time for getting the samples well it's this leads to the delivery question which i'm sure is coming at some point um it's completely brand dependent so okay. some brands just like in the industry wide are really efficient some of them have invested in supply chain and, and digital assets and are really easy to work with and, and handle drop shipping well a lot of the smaller brands, the more kind of niche um, craftsman type brands are a little inefficient is a, the easiest way to say it. They, they've got great products, but they weren't, they were built to sell onesie twosies, not cater to 10,000 designers. Um, right. So it really just depends. It's, it's a hard question to answer because there's 200 plus brands that we're serving and what we do is facilitate it as quickly as possible. 
stay on the brand as much as possible without crossing the line into annoyance and potentially losing the account. Um, but the best thing about our platform, I think, and why I'd encourage everyone just to give it a shot is it's free. It's free for designers. It's free for brands. Our incentives are completely aligned. Like we are only making money when we help you sell, when you buy something or when you can sell something. And same with the brands. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for brands to cater to designers. As a whole, 200 of them aren't going to be able to centralize and do this in a routine way. So we're our customer service team and, and support and automation when we can build it is all about normalizing a very messy kind of back end operation. OK, um, let's see here. I just want to have a quick look. OK, so let's let's kind of just dive into the. Um, the kind of some of the scenarios that designers are dealing with. So we know that it's it's getting easier and easier for clients to shop products behind the clients or behind the designer's back. You know, the designer does all this work to put together this great design and then they find out, oh, hey, the client was able to find the product elsewhere. So are there any sort of additional steps that Side Door does to kind of help mitigate that issue? Yeah, it's a it's a tough, tough problem because yeah. the reality is, is we've all got one of these and your client has been trained by brilliant tech technologists to like think everything is Amazon easy. Our industry doesn't work like that, especially these big, large products aren't going to be able to show up at your client's house for free tomorrow. Amazon Prime style. Our industry is just not there yet. Um, however, just like your client, designers are spending a lot of time on their phone. And if they can focus that time and think about, oh, man, I love this. I wonder if someone else will love it. And they have a website or a service like eDesign, et cetera, where people can get it from them. There's no more barriers to being able to scale that. Like coming up with your own website, doing basic marketing 101, uh, having shoppable mood boards, et cetera, are kind of table stakes right now, as far as I see it, unless you're very comfortable working, you know, in a just a one-to-one -one type relationship. If, if that's your goal and that's your plan for your business, totally fine. Um, you don't need a whole lot of technical support. You don't need a, a back office team like we've got. That's great. Um, but if you want to grow and you want to scale, then, we can help you with that. And the historically that was really hard for a creative, a designer who didn't necessarily have to have the time, frankly, to navigate all the nuance of the industry. A lot of that stuff has been, has been wiped away through platforms like ours. Like we've done a lot of the heavy lifting to, you know, we can help you embed and make your website shoppable right now. Um, there's, you can have your own e-commerce website as a designer without a fulfillment center, without having to touch any product. Um, you know, platforms like design files can help you organize your entire business and make it streamline a lot of, of processes, et cetera. So there's, there's great tools out there. And if, if you're actively willing to, um, or focus on growth, the only kind of limitation there is, being uncomfortable for a while, putting yourself out there and going for it. Um, I just know from experience, we've got 9,500 designers on our platform, designers, some of, them of whom have gone from zero sales outside of a one-to-one -one relationship to hundreds of thousands of dollars um, in a year, in less than a year. And that hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales that they've generated has resulted in you know, fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars in extra pure revenue coming into their business. We've paid out close to three million dollars in commissions to designers. Um, that is, is that's why we why we kind of do this. It helps small businesses grow and survive. Um, and design is hard, and we're trying to just simply give the design creatives, digital tools, because we really believe everything's moving online. And if you can't participate in that, you're going to get 
left behind. Just to kind of touch on that, Chad, uh, you were talking about some of the designers that were able to generate hundreds of thousands of extra dollars. Is that a case where they have set up a store for themselves? Is that yeah. the, the main scenario or are they doing well, other methods? There's there's a lot of hustle out there, frankly. Um, the whole passive income thing drives me crazy. It's not like you can throw together a mood board and throw it into the void of the Internet and all of a sudden like start ringing the you know, ringing the bell and revenue just shows up in your account. You still have to put yourself out there to me. And I, I think one of your earlier presenters talked about it's it should be on your website. That should be the hub of your business. And on that website, you should tell a very quick and, and powerful story about why someone should care, why someone should want to buy from you, what, what you're going to what problems you're going to be able to solve for them. And once you do that, you can do it for more people. Um, with some very simple sales funnels, shoppable mood boards, for instance, like Pinterest, for God's sakes. We're seeing tons of orders that are coming in because it's a visual search engine and people have curated and put things they like. And you can search for items, search for, you know, styles there and end up on these designers websites instead of somewhere else. And when they land on this designer's website or they see this designer's board, they're now working with a human being. They're not, it's not an algorithm. It's not a billion dollar house type corporation. It's a real person and it's a chance for you to be in a relationship with them. Um, if you're willing to put yourself out there like that and just do some basic things to make it easy for them to buy from you. Um, establishing some credibility. It's never been easier to to for a small business to be a big business or at least have the perception of a big business. Uh, as it is right now. Okay. Um, I, I'd like to kind of jump forward a little bit, if that's cool. Um, I know that we're going to get this question. So, you know, there's there's other platforms on the market that are doing similar things to Side Door. So just curious what your thoughts are when it comes to how Side Door differs from companies like Designer Inc. or, um, or Daniel House. Is there yeah. a different way that you're approaching things? Yeah, well, it shouldn't be surprised anyone. We've got a lot of co there's a lot of copycats going on. Um, we're we're in going into our three and a half years, and what we got is our own proprietary tech platform and some really good engineers that support it, and it's free. And our incentives are a lot like always question incentives. First of all, like show me the incentives and I'll show you the outcome. Like we're totally motivated to build products for designers to help you make more money because that's the only way we make money. And it also helps you grow your business. We want to grow our own business. Um, we want to help brands sell to more designers. There's, you know, 75 or $77 billion worth of, deep fragmented um, purchasing happening based on what designers tell people to go buy every year and designers have no way to leverage that. So we're trying to aggregate that, centralize it. And by doing so, we're able to offer designers more, give them a better discount, et cetera, because we can centralize that purchasing, centralize those orders for these brands. And we're able to protect the brands by protecting their IMAP. That's super important to those guys. And it also centralizes a lot of the back and forth. Um, these brands are actively looking for ways to sell online. Some of them selling direct, some of them offering their own trade programs, et cetera. And if that works for you, it's great. What we're trying to do is get all of them in one place um, and then offer a suite of services and selling tools for designers. And when we do that, we think it's a really powerful engine. Very cool. Okay, let's uh, maybe let's talk a little bit about how the whole process works. So if I'm an interior designer and I've put together a collection of products that I'm going to share with my client, my client goes ahead, they purchase the products through Side Door. Walk me through the, the process for how Side Door is going to get these products through to my customer as efficiently as possible. Sure. So to start that process, a designer goes onto our platform, can search by brand, style, whatever, look at that product, and they'll see two prices in there. 
you'll see the retail or IMAP price. That means your client, if they do shop you, they're going to go on Google and they're going to find it at that price. Um, and then there's the designer net price, the same price that you'd get if you go to these brands directly. So there's two way, two workflows. A designer can purchase from us as a designer at the designer net price. And one of the reasons you would do that is if you want to mark it up above the IMAP price and sell it to your client. And if that's a service you provide, if that's the way your business is set up, that's fine. Or you can just take those products, put them in what we call collections, share them directly with the client. You can embed those products if you're using design files on a mood board, the shoppable, et cetera. And if that client buys it, they using our tool, they're thinking they're buying it from you. They're going to see your logo, your curated collection that you picked for them. And then when they buy it, they're buying it at the retail or IMAP price. What's happening behind the scenes, that order is coming through to us. We're placing the order with the manufacturer right away. And then we're scheduling delivery. It can ship directly to a receiver or it can be drop shipped directly to a homeowner. Um, there's also a white glove option that the client can have at checkout, pay a little more if they want it brought into their house, put together, et cetera. And then we're going to update the designer that your client just bought something. Here's what's going on. We're going to update the end user and all these are automated. They also show up in your account in the order section on our page. Um, and then we're going to see it all the way through. We're going to chase this vendor and make sure it gets shipped. They're going to get a notification that is out for delivery. It's going to be delivered unless there's a problem in transit. The, we're going to follow up, make sure it's been delivered. And at that point, we're going to directly deposit the commission, which is the, again, the difference between designer net and IMAP through via Stripe connection directly into your bank account. Um, and anyone who's been in this industry for a while, like if there's a collection, you put five things together for a client, they may be five different vendors. So there's going to be five different shipments that you, if you're doing it by yourself, are going to have to coordinate. We've just taken that all off your plate. You don't have to do five different purchase orders to these brands. You don't have to send 20 emails or five calls, whatever, to, to chase it all down, make sure it gets delivered. Our customer support team is going to do all that. Um, and then things get broken, things get damaged in transit. It's a huge time suck for a you know independent operator of a business who is already busy um, to chase things down, to deal with claims, et cetera. We do all of that because the order was placed on our account. It was shipped on our freight account and it's between us and the brand and the shipping company who's paying for what based on whose fault it was. Um, so at the end of the day, your client gets what they, what you picked for them. They, when they're buying it directly, you didn't come out of pocket and buy it and have to resell it. Um, the client paid, the retail price for it and we're paying you the commission. So it's a kind of a different way to think about it, but um, it works and it works because it takes a huge amount of the admin and back office stuff off your plate. And in its best case scenario, like it frees you up to do what you do best, which is put designs together, curate products, put looks together, put mood boards together and do the creative stuff, which is what they came to you for, not for the back office um, stuff. I, I see a lot of questions coming in. This sounds too good to be true. It's not, <laughs> We're going to get to those questions, guys. I, Just <laughs> it, it, one thing I always say, it's not like all these problems have magically been solved like in the industry, like deliveries, damages, brand shipping the wrong product. It still happens. The difference is it's on us. That was placed on our account. We're the one who's got to sort it out. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, your client needs to be made happy. You need to carry on. You need to move on and do things. We're going to handle that. Um, we work with these brands closely. We're placing a lot of orders with them. And we've got a, our own account, you know, uh, reps or owners in their organizations now in a lot of cases. And they are facilitating the end goal, which is to make this as error free as possible, um, but it's still the home furnishings industry. These are still big, heavy products and stuff still happens. Um, 
it's not like an easy button that everything's magically gotten fixed. Um, the easy button part is now like when it works, you can still make a lot more money without spending any of your own money. And you've saved a ton of time because we're handling all the back end. Awesome. So I am seeing the question pop up. Uh, is SideTour going to ever going to handle returns? And I would assume that that would ba be based on the manufacturers. Uh, right. A lot of the, a lot of the trade only brands right now, uh, if you try to order something from them, they're not going to take a return. If you try to go direct. Um, however, as things go, now that we've got some more leverage we're getting closer and closer to being able to do it the reason we have it from the beginning is because it's the reason a lot of companies like ours go out of business because ordering a ten thousand dollar piece of furniture on a whim getting it shipped just so your client can touch it put it in the room and then deciding oh i don't like that you know i don't like that foot on it and now we're coming to pick it up and to return it to the brand. The brand doesn't want it back and mm -hmm. we can't get stuck with it because it was on our account. Um, so we're trying to build, build something for the long haul here. I get returns. Um, that's why we encourage, like, that's why we want to work with designers, professional designers that know what the client should have. We want to work with high end brands, professional brands that stand behind their products. And when things get damaged in transit, et cetera, of course we take it back. And we do make, the occasional exception, but we're delivering between 60 and 100 different shipments a day right now. And the average return online is like 40% of those. Like that's not a business model that we can sustain. It's just, right. it doesn't make any sense. And it's just not the reality of our industry, which sucks because we'd get a lot more checkouts, surely. Um, but it's also a we're trying to build something long-term here. Okay. Um, all right. So let's have a quick look here. Um, one of the things that I did want to kind of touch on for this particular webinar, and I, maybe we can jump into that now and we can then save some of the questions for directly afterwards. But I was seeing some questions pop up about how people can use uh, side door products within design files. So, some of you probably already know, some of you might not know, but uh, we've been teaming up with SideDoor to create an integration just to kind of make your lives a lot easier when it comes to sourcing the products, getting those design boards ready, generating those product lists so that you can kind of speed up your overall design flow process, as well as having SideDoor handle the whole product order management side of it as well. So we're trying to tackle this from a multiple from multiple ways to help you guys streamline your process and maybe what we can do right now is just show how that integration with design files and side door works so you can see how it can streamline your workflow and then we'll dive right into the millions of questions that are popping up within this chat feed i think we need to set some time aside to just address all of that so yeah yeah sheila let me just like cole <laughs> just did something really smart here um all these comments. I, we're going to get a copy of them later. Um, myself and our team can reply like to specific questions that come. Awesome. Up. So we'll, we'll get that back. We'll get back to you on all that. Okay, cool. Well, that, that works out well. We'll still try to address as many of those during this session as we can. Anything that we can't address, then Chad, you and your team can kind of take it from there. But let's go ahead and I'm just going to take over the screen share if we're good to go on this. Does everybody kind of want to get a sense for how this design file side door integration works? If you want to see it, pop into the chat, just say yes. We'll get a sense of what the audience is looking for here and then we can move forward from that. Oh, there you go. So excited about side door. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's go ahead. Awesome. All right. So it looks like we are. Wow. Okay. Let me go ahead and get this screen share up and running here. So let me see something here. Okay. I'm just going to. Maybe I'm just going to remove us entirely. Let me know. Okay. I'm just going to pop over to design files. 
Let me know if Chad's and my face are still showing in the bottom of the screen or if it's kind of blocking the view. And I'm just gonna pop back here for one second so I can see your answers. Okay, I think if you're saying no, your face isn't showing all good, awesome. All right, guys, here we go. So yeah, we've been working together with the side door team to see if we can just further help streamline the overall workflow so that you are minimizing the number of steps that you need to take all the way from the sourcing to the design board creation, creating the product list, allowing the client to shop the look or checking them out yourselves, and then also having side door manage the whole order management process. So if you like the idea of being able to just kind of get everything working together for you so that you can move through your projects faster, you can choose to integrate your design files account with your side door account. Now, the way that you would typically do this is you can pop into your design files account. You're just gonna go right up to the settings in the top right hand corner, click into that. You'll see that you've got your side door sync right here. Just click on that and you're gonna see a button that says connect to side door. I'm already connected, so mine's saying disconnect but you would click the button that says connect to side door. It's gonna pop you right over to side door where you can log into your account and you'll see a one-step process where it's just gonna ask you if you want to connect your side door account to your design files account. You'll do that and then you're all set. And if you don't have a side door account and you love the idea of being able to earn those 30% commissions and have access to all those trade products, you can still come over here you can uh, click the button to connect to side door. And instead of clicking the login option, you're just going to go ahead and click the option to create an account. And then again, once you've created your account, you'll click that option to say, yeah, I want to connect my design files account to side door. Once that's done, you'll be brought right back to this view, at which point you can jump into any of the projects that you have on the go. And, uh, Let's see here, I'm gonna jump into one of the ones that I've already created here. So when you jump into one of the projects that you have on the go, anytime you go into the mood board software, you're now going to be able to access the entire side door product collection within design files. So if you wanna be able to access that, pop over to the right side panel, go into the vendors tab, scroll down, this is all alphabetical, so just scroll down until you see side door, Click onto that, and now you've got all the side door products already available in design files, and you can start pulling these items out onto your design board to build out your designs. And just an FYI, all of these items right here are all side door products, and this is a design that I created. So you can build out designs like this. You're gonna have access to loads of products. If you wanted to browse by brand, you can also break down the entire side door collection right here. And then you can see all of the different brands that are available and then you can narrow down to their specific collections. So it just makes that whole sourcing time a lot easier. Like Chad said, I mean, if you can get 200 plus trade brands all in one place and just be able to pull through all those products, it's a lot faster than having to jump around from website to website to website to start pulling these together. Now, the cool thing about this is that once you've built out your design, you can just save your design. And when you go back to the app, if I scroll down here, you'll see this that's gonna show up. So there's gonna be a message that lets you know, you've got 23 side door products. Do you wanna create a collection? All you have to do is click this button right here. You're gonna give your collection a name. So we'll just call this sample, uh, sample collection. But here's the thing. If you want, or if you love the idea of letting your client be able to just click through any of the shop buttons and go directly over to side door to purchase the products, then you want to set your collection as public. If you like the idea of being in control of ordering the products on behalf of your client, you can set the collection as private and then you can place the order. I'm going to leave it as public for now, just so you can see what that looks like. And we'll create the collection. We've got our collection. Uh, set up here, we can see that it's created with uh, 23 side door products. So now that this is all set up and ready to go, the nice thing about this is that you can now just choose to invite your client to come on in. You can submit the designs to them, add their email address in here, turn on any of the toggles for any design boards where you want to allow them to come and see these designs, and then just go ahead and submit the actual designs to your client. 
And when you do that, they're going to get an email. It'll be branded to your business. And it's just going to have a simple message that says, designs are ready for you to re review. Come on in and have a look at them. They're going to be brought to this view where they're going to be able to come down to this product list and they can approve items, decline items, they can leave feedback, or they can click those shop buttons and they'll be able to jump right over to side door site to go ahead and purchase that product. And if you like the idea of being able to uh, just place the order yourself over here, you're going to see your side door settings option and you can even check out as a designer. So if I check out as a designer, it'll bring me straight to cart. It's going to show me all the items that I added to that design board, including quantities needed. And I could go ahead and I can just place that order and allow side door to take care of the order management process for me. So it's just one way that we can kind of, again, use technology to just kind of connect up the tools that you're using, see if we can streamline the process a little bit further and just save you a bit more time when you're managing your projects. And if you're doing strictly vir uh, virtual design projects and you're going to let the client shop the look, this is a great way to just quickly create those product lists and give your client a one checkout process instead of having to jump around to so many different locations to buy all that product and have it shipped to their place so that they can finally put their designs together. So I just thought I would do a quick screen share so that you could see how the integration works. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop the screen share now. And we'll just jump right back in here to the regular view for this particular uh, webinar here and see if we can start going ahead and answering some questions for you guys. Yeah, Sheila, can I add one thing? I've just been kind of scanning the questions and I might be able to say two things that would answer a bunch of questions. Um, mm -hmm. One is another benefit when you can come into Side Door, all these brands give us daily inventory feeds. So there's lead times um, and whether something's in stock or what the brand says the lead times is. It's not 100 percent, but it's also one place where you can go across a bunch of products, bunch of brands and see, you know, if something's in stock and be able to tell your client what an ETA would be. Um, the other thing that I failed to mention is coupons. Uh, we've rolled that out. I've seen a handful of questions. We've got some support documents, videos, ways that we can answer all those. Um, I can share anything after the webinar, but in, in general, it's a way for you to match some of these hyper aggressive uh, e-com sites that do things like because of their purchasing power with these brands, they get IMAP holidays and they get other kind of special perks because of how much revenue they're generating for the brand. And it's hard to compete with that. So if, if you're in jeopardy of losing a sale, we have a coupon code that you can provide that gives um, something that you can set, something that you can share. And it's another way to, to hopefully keep the sale with you instead of losing it to someone else. That's awesome. I actually did want to check in with you guys about the discounts because I know that there was a number of requests for that. So that's officially live. You're all set and good to go for it. It is live. It's working. And uh, there's some, I'm not a stats guy, but like 35% or something of the orders in the last two weeks have had coupons applied against them. So it's something that we've been building for a while, um, testing, and we finally kind of opened it up to everyone. Nice. So actually, the other I wanted to actually clarify something too here because I just saw some comments coming through about changing the name of the collection. And you know what, ladies? Well, actually, I can't see if you're a lady or a gen. All I see is Facebook user. So whoever said maybe change the name, you were bang on. I already had a collection inside door that was called Sample <laughs> Collection and just changing it to Sample is why it worked. So there you go. Have separate or, or unique names for each of your collections and everything will work perfectly. Okay, let's go ahead. We are going to dive into some of these questions. Um, okay, so somebody wanted to ask if it was possible to embed the collections on their website. Absolutely. Yep, it doesn't matter what uh, service you're using, Shopify, Squarespace, Wix, uh, whatever. We give you an iframe snippet and it's dynamic. So you plug it in one time. And then if you want to change the products, for instance, you change it inside door and it shows up automatically on your website. 
we've got dozens of really good examples and I'm happy to share all that after if you want to see what other designers, what how other people are using it for different um, different packages, different e-design, different there's all kinds of creative ways people have figured out how to use them. They work on blog posts. They work, uh, if someone's on Instagram, for instance, so I love that lamp. If you just did a picture of an install you did, where can I get it? Instead of saying, oh, that's visual comfort, you can say, or, oh, that's, you know, Bliss Studio, whatever. You can quickly share a shoppable link right there in the instant message and they can check out. So there's a lot of, a lot of creative ways you can employ these. That's awesome. Okay, let's have a quick look through here. You know what, I think I'm just gonna scroll all the way to the top here, just to make sure that we're kind of knocking these things. Holy moly, you guys, that's a lot of questions. Okay, here we go. Let's make our way through. Uh, somebody's asking, is the commission really true, the 25 to 30%? <laughs> It's it very, every brand has different pricing, but on average, it's 27% across all the brands. Um, some it's 40 to 50 or higher. Some it's, it's 15, but collectively they're all higher than any affiliate commission you may make. Um, but on average, yeah, 27%. Okay. Um, I've got another question here. Uh, questions about, Plans to move to Canada. Are you guys uh, still thinking about Absolutely. standing in? It's a big place and there's a lot of creative designers there. And yes, we're 100% coming. Uh, it's been a process. We've got a pretty extensive roadmap that we're trying to keep up with. But coming into Canada is definitely on it. The issue, frankly, more than you need to know, is getting goods from the U.S. into Canada um, is not as easy as it should be. Um, and across all these different categories, HTS codes, et cetera, it's, it's kind of complicated, but, uh, Jordan on our team, that's one of his main projects and it's definitely going to happen soon. Okay. Um, I do have a question here about how consistent is Sidor's installation ser uh, service? It's super important. So again, I think that comes down to the delivery guys that you guys are working with or. Yeah. And again, like that. These brands, we, we don't have our own warehouse, our own trucks, our own guys delivering it. We're relying on third party providers, um, Diligent, Siva, and these brands are drop shipping. So hopefully they're packaging it right. They're delivering it right with professional drivers that aren't just going to throw it in the driveway and take off. But when that does happen, it's on us to fix it. Um, we can't control a lot of that but we make it our mission to try to, when it does happen, to make it right as quickly as possible. And just kind of bouncing on that, is there a particular contact or um, somebody specific that people can reach out to if there are damages or needs for returns or anything like that? Yep, absolutely. Um, info at Onside Door goes to our entire team and gets routed to the appropriate department. There's also a chat function on our marketing site and inside the app that you can chime in anytime it's, it's monitored by multiple people. Um, so yeah, we're on it. The average response time is like under, I'm again, I'm not a stat guy. It's under like two minutes or something. They're very, they're very on top of things. Um, that's something we take pride in. Okay. I've got another question here that's mentioning that it, it, it the designer noticed that on side door, it doesn't look like side door is carrying all of the products that the vendor has. They're using four hands as an example that maybe there's still some items on four hands. That's a, that's not currently in side door. Yeah. 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 I love this question. Let me give you just a peek behind the curtain a little bit. We sell a ton of four hands, four hands sells hundreds of millions of dollars of products a year, and they've got a zillion SKUs. The way they work with companies like us is in tiers and we've got our own key account rep now and we're limited by forehands by to how many SKUs we can show, which is really frustrating, but it's the way they work with their digital platforms that they invest in. So the more we sell, the more we get to show and we've we've just reached a next tier. So we're adding more. We like the entire thing. Um, we want the same and we want to be able to provide the same stuff that a Burke Decor or, a, you know, Kathy Kuo can. Um, we're just ramping up to that. So 
it's coming. And it also is up to the brand what they allow us to show. Um, off, I ask for the entire catalog and then there's a negotiation and some things might be earmarked for certain retailers or blah, blah, blah. So there's a, right. there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff happening, but our mission is to try to have as many products, as much choice uh, available as possible. Awesome. Okay. Let's have a quick look through here. Okay, so I've got a designer here who said that um, her website gets more traffic as uh, as far as purchased made through side door versus when I go to share a link. How can I best implement my side door collection to my website, but still show vendors that I recommend the, okay, hold on. Oh, but still show vendors that I recommend the most. I see what she's saying. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That we can definitely help with. It's a little more of a long winded answer, but in short, our customer support team can help you and we can curate both public and private collections. Uh, you can share public and private and the way the iframe tool works. Um, it depends on your, the way your website is set up. If you want like a, if you have like a lighting section or if you want to do like, you know, mid-century modern lighting or something. Those are different collections and you can pull product into them on our app. It's going to show up automatically on your site. And the way the internet works with SEO and backlinks, et cetera, all this stuff you should have visibility into with Google Analytics. I don't know how technical you want to get, but there's definitely ways to optimize it. And we, we can advise you on that. Okay. Uh, I do have a question here that's kind of a combo about how to use side door and design files together. Is there a way we can have our side door collections populate in design files? Right now you can select side door as a vendor. However, the collections are not visible and all the products have to be searched individually to populate a mood board within design files. So right now we've got a specific integration that's set up that allows you to access the full side door library and build your design boards from that which you can then generate collections from so i mean we can always look into furthering that integration and seeing if there's other ways that we can build in so that collections are coming over from side door as well it's just not something that we have available at this time but chad maybe you and i need to talk about that <laughs> You need to talk to Sean and Rachel about that. I'm going to <laughs> okay. Um, but, but, All right. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Great idea. All right. Let's keep going here. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I think we've, we've really, really kind of already touched on this about side door handling the shipping and receiving of products. Do you feel like there's anything else that you want to clarify? Well, I just, that? out of the corner of my eye, I just caught something that may be relevant. Um, Obviously, lead times and inventory and stocks change all the time. So if you create a, a public collection on Tuesday and it said there's 25 available and then somebody orders 30, it's going to change on our side. So the lead time, if you're using a, an iframe snippet, will update automatically. Um, so that may be confusing if you're not using the iframes, but the, the quantities, if something goes out of stock or something gets discontinued, that's all built on our side. It changes on our side and will automatically show up on your site or in your mood board. Um, so you, in other words, you don't need to be a, an engineer to go in and change things every day. Um, it's all set up for you. Okay. Um, I've got another question here that's more specific about selecting a receiver. So how do you select a receiver and who schedules the delivery from the receiver to the client? Uh, that's on our side. It, I'm going to, I've been writing myself some notes. We've got a list of receivers that we've worked with before that may or may not be in your area. It's kind of a local dependent thing. And like anything, some are better than others, but, uh, once, the item is delivered. If you choose having it shipped to a receiver, which the reason you would do that is it's more efficient, it's safer. It's going to be stocked there. The house might not be ready, blah, blah, blah. It's also cheaper. They have a loading dock. They're going to receive it for you, et cetera. For, if you do that, when you pay for that service at checkout, getting it from the receiver's warehouse to the end user is going to be back on your side. 
we're out at that point. Um, we've gotten it to the receiver, which is what you told us to do. Anything from the receiver to the end client, that's going to be between you and the receiver. Okay. I actually have uh, one comment here. It's not a question. It's just uh, some food for thought. Um, I've got a designer here saying, hey, Chad, it would be great if the item descriptions were much more detailed. This is really important when sourcing. More photos of the item would be helpful too. It just gives the client lots of details to help them feel confident in the purchase. Believe me, you're preaching to the choir. I hear you. <laughs> we figured. <laughs> it's all with these guys all week long. And the challenge, frankly, is a lot of these brands have been asleep for two decades and didn't invest in the digital assets that they need. And now they're, they're scrambling. They're playing catch up. But if it exists, we ask for it and get it. And we do a lot of optimizing and normalizing to get it into our site and try to fill in the gaps as possible. But that we've got a whole team. Uh, our data team does nothing but this. And it's, it's a challenge. It, I can say it's a hundred times better than it was last year and it continuously gets better. Um, so yeah, I totally agree. The more detail, the more pictures we're going to work on being able to show some like 3d renderings and stuff when they're available, some videos, et cetera, all that's coming. Um, we're just, building as we go as fast as we can. And uh, one question that's bothering me, I've been using iframe and embed interchangeably. I mean the same thing. Um, so an iframe works like an embed. So sorry for jumping around. No, all right. We've got two minutes left here, you guys. So we'll see if we can get in a couple of more questions. I am gonna have to cut it off at that point because at two o'clock, I'm supposed to do a whole other webinar. So Chad, I'm going to have to kick your butt out of here. But let's see if we can get a couple more questions in here. And then we'll we'll just kind of wrap this up. So I see one that I'd like to answer real quick. Sure, when, go for it. Then you get paid. Very good question. You get paid once the item has been successfully delivered to your client. Um, that's when our system kicks into gear and it happens upon upon delivery. So unlike some of the affiliate programs that make you wait 90 days, you're getting paid as soon as it's delivered. And it's on side door. When you set up your account, you also connect through Stripe. We're, we're just an interface there. We don't have info to your bank account or anything like that. But once it's done, that's how we deposit money from our account into your account directly uh, via Stripe. And it shows up the day after, in most cases, once things have been delivered. All right. Okay, guys, I think we're going to leave it at that. Um, Chad, you have access to the Facebook group, so you, you can go in and kind of answer some of these questions. Yes, yeah, I'm not a Facebook, I'm not okay. Facebook <laughs> proficient, but I just wanted to throw something out. We've got a really great customer success team. Um, we've got webinars. We do, we're trying to do as much as possible. Anybody that has questions, I'm Chad at Onside Door, um, info at Onside Door. Uh, just reach out. We'll, uh, we're going to get this list of questions. I'm going to answer as many as I can. Our team will answer as many as we can. And uh, I appreciate everybody's attention. Thanks for joining. And we're going to keep building. So thanks for your patience, too, as we try to figure this complicated problem out. Look, man, it looks like I can't let you go because I'm being told that we need Chad for three more hours. Oh, so. lovely. <laughs> well, I told <laughs> Sheila already. I'm like... We're both introverts doing an extrovert's job. And so one hour wears me out, but I, uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. And I'm happy to do anything, uh, anymore. Um, and we do weekly webinars. Our customer success team does them all the time. So anybody that wants information or has questions, we should be able to get you good answers. All righty. Well, we'll, we'll close it off at that. Chad, always awesome talking to you. I'm glad you were able to come in. Um, I guess what I'm going to do here is I think we need to, I think actually I have to stay on because I'm oh, just going to no. jump into the next one. So I'm just going to kick you out and then no I'll just problem. continue on. <laughs> no problem. Thanks everybody. Thanks Sheila. Appreciate the opportunity. All right. All right. Good talking to you.